Version 32 ability tier list for Boonstar Defense 6. So, how we're acting this is going to be SS for the singular best ability, as for really generally good abilities, as, as in it gets progressively worse until we reach the ones with no real use case and ones that aren't even free gems. So, ranking criteria. We're ranking the actual tower's viability here. We're also ranking the price of the tower, including the price of a hero slot for heroes, which is why some hero abilities are low, though they're good for their price. Like, Sword Charge for $650 is really good, but Sword Charge for $650 and a hero slot is not very good. We're also trying to focus on what the ability does and not what the tower does. So for example, Snowstorm as a whole tower would be much higher, but as a standalone ability, it lacks duration and is generally outclassed by our slowness. So let's get on with it. To start off as our best ability in the game, it's Brickles Mega Mind sitting alone in SS. Second up is Sabo, and you can argue between Sabo, SS, Brickle Mines, S, or the other way around, but we've decided to put Brickle Mines in SS because of how strong it is when it actually works. It's a bit more specialized and also a bit more niche, but if you can manage to use it, it does so much better than what Sabo ever does, even with the cost of a hero slot. And then moving on to SS, we have Sabo again, Moab Hex, Cure Kills, AP Kills, Cyanic Scream, and Summon Phoenix. So Sabo is there because it's good against dense rounds, it's really good against nimble rounds, it has decent uptime, lasting almost the entirety of 95, counters DTTs very well, essentially doubling your damage as you have the balloon speed. It's also cheap, only 8000 and is good mid game because the slow layer soaks through balloons. It's a really good ability and also universal. Second up we have Moab Hex. Well, it is a really good ability especially since Azili herself is a really good hero. What Moab Hex does is it follows Azili's targeting and places a hex on the blimp she targets. That hex either does a percentage of damage after a tick, or if you pop the Moab, the hex jumps using up a tick and also clearing up the insides, which means with 25 ticks per hex, you have such a good RB reduction and a really good mid game carry. Superstorm Ravine is a run that comes to mind. Hex was extremely crucial in killing ZMGs. Yeah, Hex is really good. With 25 ticks, it can hex up to 25 blimps, which, if I recall correctly, is all of the FPFVs in 98 if you want to give that number some weight, so... Use Hex. Zeely's really good. Cure Kills AP Kills, on the other hand, is also really good. He starts absolutely destroying dense rounds like 98 with that. It's there's not much to say except that it adds so much DPS and gives it normal type which is good for DDTs. Without this, Cure Kill is absolutely horrible. Don't use Cure Kill if you're not going to use AP Kills. It's so crucial to his kit. Also helps with rounds like 76, 78, 63 if you don't have abilities like Xyonix Cream or where is it? Ground Zero or whatever. Xyonix Cream. It's size main use case. It blows back half of the Moab's side can target and completely kills the other half. It also procs a lot of destructive resonance, which is good for balloons in the mid game. It's a really good RB minimizer and basically the main reason why you're using size this ability. Now the Summon Phoenix. We've recently discovered that Summon Phoenix is really good. It has global 50 damage and 10 pierce and ignores line of sight. Is cheap, does not rely on alt buff. Kills super shrams in 1.2 seconds, which means that it can fit into almost every mid game save up. 
also has competent stepping stones but we're not looking at that we're only looking at tower viability tower price and how good the ability is and the ability is really good 20 second duration and a 45 second cooldown means that having two of them essentially gives you 100% of time this thing basically solves two waves of 63 while being up for 64 also barely needs any help for 76 and 78 which is insane for a $9,000 tower also has a lot of value post 80 and it's supposed to save up value is arguable but it's just too good at saving up to not put in S next up S minus Moab Raj Sarbamba Passeror Ground Zero Marine First Strike Capability so Wizard Lord Phoenix UCAF Turbo Charge Rapid Shot Perma Charge and Dark Shift Moab Raj this is really good for his UMTs and it's also important to why Churchill is such a good hero. Moab Baraj really weakens the MGs which helps with Churchill and his best energy such as the balloon area denial system. I'm not used to not using acronyms so forgive me if I'm a bit slow. It's also pretty good in the mid game, it's just a generally good ability especially since it synergizes really well with his actual shells since it pops everything which means his shells have a lot of things to hit which procs more and makes him deal more damage Sarbamba okay I know it's $50,000 but it has a competent stepping stone it's a generally good tower and you're killing half of 98 in one press this ability is pretty low cooldown it has nearly no weaknesses except round 95 and 100 and 92 it's just a generally good uh, nuke ability, useful in most notably Ravine Lee's Cash Chimps as well as Lee's Tower Chimps. Patsuror is a very good ability, helps a lot mid game, early, and late game. You can build entire strategies late game for black borders around this ability, which is pretty damn decent. It gives plus 3 damage to all towers in range, which means it synergizes as well with towers like Sun Avatar or destroyers although brickle is a much better hero for destroyers so it's just genuinely good round zero sarbamba but weaker but cheaper and for mid game also one shots ddt's which is pretty nice there's not much to say the special populations marine is a very good cleanup tower spending fifty thousand dollars for cleanup is a bit iffy but it actually does its job well and does not horrendously do nothing against non super ceramics which is nice and downdraft is a good stepping stone but again we're not counting that first strike capability is only here for around 100 keys especially since now 042 spike storm does not gain the start of round speed bonus due to a quote unquote bug fix the first strike capability layer skipping is really important as sometimes your defense doesn't have enough track length left after popping the bad to handle the ZMGs. Like if you're not running a nuke ability like Ground Zero or Giant Extreme, your defense is most likely chasing the balloons, which means it's gonna get pierced capped by the balloons that spawn in the back of the ZMGs. Overrunning your defense. The Wizard Lord Phoenix. Sarbamba, but it does much better against DDTs, but noticeably worse, but still really, really good against dense rounds. UCAP is still a very strong mid game tower, but unfortunately, it does not do well against the UMGs and the current mid game meta. And by that, I mean Phoenix and only Phoenix. It's impressive how oppressive this mid game tower is. The current mid game meta does not do well against the UMGs, which is UCAV's weakness, which makes other hero options such as Hex or Moabrach much more appealing. But if you're using it with something like an Elite Defender mid game, it's very noticeably good. It's still overall a pretty good ability. And from a UCAV, without the ability, it's pretty dog water, but with it, it does deal pretty significant damage. Turbo charge 
this is not me ranking it I have not personally used it but I've heard that it's actually really damn good so yeah rapid shot rapid shot is what gives Quincy his only niche which is to be a Moab DPS on the early 80s since he gets his levels early rapid shot does multiply his damage by three to four times depending on the level which with a relatively decent uptime due to his levels, it's pretty damn good for the early 80s. Perma charge. Not as important as turbo charge is to the main tower, but still a very good ability, which is similar to Dark Shift, where I would not use perma charge without the ability, but it's not the main selling point. And finally, Dark Shift in S minus. I'm gonna admit. I was definitely biased on this one, it definitely deserves A, but I like using Dark Knights and I think that it's a crucial ability. You never realize how important mobility is unless you try to think of a setup with DKs that don't actually use Dark Shift. Just a heads up, it's not, it's so important, especially with how meta splitting your DPS is now for mid game. Up next on the A tier, we have Naval Tactics, Annihilation, Artillery Command, I don't know if I'm getting that right because I haven't used Jones in forever, Moab Eliminator, Papinawa, Concussive Shell, Ball of Light, Blood Sacrifice, the MAD, Absolute Zero, Bombardment, Super Maelstrom, Long Arm of Light, and Siphon Funding. Yes, Ben's ability is making it relatively high on a Kemp's tier list. We'll get to that later. So naval tactics. It's mostly here because of Brick Destroyers and it lets Brick Destroyers actually clean up the mess Mega Mine leaves without stalling. It gives double attack speed and plus one pierce for a relatively long duration, which is important because Destroyers only have base 1 pierce, 2 with the passive purple buff, and that's... Yeah, that's triple damage, now that I think about it. Which is insane. It's basically required for... Brook Destroyer save ups, and they're basically the best save up on Ouch, and a really good one on Quad. Annihilation carries over from being a pretty decent mid game carry that saves up quite a bit into a really good RB deleter late game, so it's ranked pretty high. It can easily f one shot all of the fortified BFPs of 98, which for a safe up tower that's definitely really really good. Artillery command is ranked here because of Moab Eliminator and Papana. You can use either of these without each other because. At level 20, this doubles the damage of all mortars and bombs, which is pretty good as a standalone ability, but not the best. But you can pair it up with Mobile Eliminator, which does 4,500 damage to the strongest boon on screen with a cooldown of 10 seconds. This really helps with COMGs and around 100 BAD, and does fulfill its niche as a single target damage here pretty damn well. Papinaw stuns the entire board for 8 seconds, I believe, which can be extended to 16 seconds with Artillery Command, and is really good control for either handling a massive rush or just locking the entirety of 95 in place if you have Artillery Command mid-round. Concussive Shell is a pretty solid more control option with sizable value on dense rounds like 63, 76, 78, and since it doesn't have different stun durations for different blimps, it's pretty good at controlling ZMGs. Ball of Light and Blood Sack are here because those are crucial parts of Adora's kit. You cannot play Adora without Long Arm of Light, you cannot play her without Ball of Light, and you can definitely not play her without Blood Sack. They're pretty good abilities, especially Long Lamar Flight, but unfortunately, they're put on a pretty mediocre hero. If Blood Sacrifice was placed on a hero like Churchill, for example, it would definitely be SS, no doubt. But the door is pretty weak, so yeah. So the M80 Rock System is apparently good enough to nuke a 
third of round 98 which yeah 13 and a half bad and it actually gives the MAD some super SRAM damage without relying on all of your other towers which is nice so the up to zero would have ranked much much higher if we were considering the bug which makes the permafrost three times stronger but we are not so it's a pretty good ability with a 50% uptime and a 90% low which means that you wouldn't have to worry about the top layer of stuff especially with glue press bombardment is a pretty good ability it's just heavily heavily outclassed by this skybird right here but yeah it's a pretty good ability on a pretty good tower and nothing much to say super maelstrom is here because it's it essentially acts as a main DPS for a hero slot and $20,000 which is really really good but that hero slot is way too important on expert maps which is what we're ranking this tier list on so it's not as high as it would be on like beginner tier lists although super maelstrom is a viable save up on quad and very viable on workshop so it isn't completely dead on expert maps. LOA was mentioned before and siphon funding. This is purely here because of perma spike because it's the only tower that can actually handle stuff after you afford it in combination with siphon funding. It downgrades all boons up to ZM keys but not DDTs by one layer which is amazing for a taking out the UMGs and lowering RB in general, which is really good for Perma Spike, which already beats everything after you afford Perma Spike. Not great for every single other tower, because it also takes away money. But if you use it right, it does do pretty well. So it gets to stay in A. Next up in A minus, we have Storm of Arrows, the Dark Champion Dark Gift, Psy Stun. Etienne's Drone Swarm, whoops, Wall of Trees, Overclock, Snowstorm, I think Snowstorm was higher, I, I don't remember, Plasma fun Funky Man Club, Embrace the Meme at this point, Total Transformation, Moab Assassin, and Rocket Storm. The Storm of Heroes does do the bare minimum of handling 63, 76, 78, but it does function as relatively good one-time cleanup after round 80. Although most of the damage is placebo, but it still sometimes works, so it's up there. Now, the Dark Champion Dark, dark Shift is much more crucial to this tower than Dark Shift is to the tier 3. Unfortunately, Dark Champion sucks dick and balls, so it's all the way down in A minus. This is a really good ability held back by how bad the actual tower is. Like, imagine this on, let's say, what's a pretty good tier five main DPS tower? Ah, Permacharge. This would be so good on Permacharge. You get to cut thirteen thousand dollars in a shina, which. As much as people meme on Permacurge, you know, it's pretty damn good. Yeah, I can't seem to think of anything for good Dark Shift Towers, but trust me when I say that. If this ability was given to a competent tower, it would be, yeah, as minus possibly high A. Psy Stun is just a generally good ability. Stuns Moabs, UMGs, DDTs, and COMGs, as well as Boons. And it's just a generally nice ability to have, although you're mainly using Psy for this. Don't forget. Etienne's Drone Swarm is a really good early game ability, capable of lasting through rounds 22 and 23 at once, as well as the entirety of 36, and providing some aid on round 40. And you can pretend like it does something against the UMGs, which is nice. But unfortunately, it doesn't really do much out of placebo and early game. 
Wall of Trees is a really good mid-game ability since if you play your cards right you can have a fully stocked Wall of Trees at the back and Wall of Trees charged as an abilities which is nice and it handles the mid-game pretty well especially since Oban is really bad Wall of Trees is half decent on mid-game so as I mentioned before, Snowstorm would be much much higher if we were considering the main attacks. But unfortunately we don't get the really good super strong cleanup with the Snowstorm ability. It only activates once every... I actually don't remember the cooldown but... It's pretty short but not short enough if you're solely relying on the ability. It pairs really well with Mega Mines because it you can either clump things up so Mega Mines can affect more things or you can use Snowstorm to clean up the super shrams that Mega Mine leaves. It's also occasionally better than a Sabo on fringe cases such as needing to cover the downtime of XXXL trap but that's rarely gonna happen in expert gems so let's not count on that. It's also a pretty good stall against Rikis of Moaz but only temporarily but it is pretty cheap so it's overall a pretty good ability but I'm never gonna my snowstorm just for the ability it has to be the ability plus the main attack which is a really good super SRAM controller the overclock is a really niche support because it only works on like three or four towers all that comes to mind is Permacharge, Sky Shredder, Boot Exclusion Zone, and maybe Grandmaster and Inkya. And I guess Pat Fusty and Kirkill, but that is rarely the case where overclocking them is better than getting Sabos, Moaglus, Presses, all the good stuff. Being a support that is already only affecting a few towers and sometimes being outclassed for those few towers means that it's gonna rank relatively low but when it's good it's pretty damn decent I must say. Plasma F Monkey Fan Club and the Total Transformation is here because they're solid main DPS setups. It's not the best because of the downtime but it makes up for it with much much more firepower. I still don't ever want to use this thing but apparently it's deserving of A- so I'll trust the people on that. The Moab Assassin ability is just the Moab Eliminator with less use cases, that's about it. Rocket Storm used to be the premier keys tower like bordering S but now it's all the way here. Lots of nerfs I guess, a small $400 price nerf but then followed by a 10 second cooldown nerf and then a 1 damage, 2 second duration and no longer ignores line of sight nerfs means that the rocket storm is no longer the mid game keys. We still have this, but this is no longer way too good. Now coming in on the beat here we have Pat's Hug, Sword Charge, Chinook, Glue Strike, Brambles, Spike Storm and Glue Storm. Pass Hug is here for rounds 80, 85, 87, occasionally 88, and 97. Yeah. Usually it actually weakens your defense as Pat stops attacking, but it's really good against ZM keys. And as I said, the current mid game meta, aka the singular tower, struggles against ZM keys. Although, come to think of it, I don't think I've tested Pat plus Phoenix yet. I'll add that to the list of things I need to test, but not right now. It helps with defense that struggle against CUM keys, but that's about it. Sword Charge is here mainly because it's actually legitimately good on quad, and only quad. It hits twice on quad because of all of the overlaps, sometimes three times, but most of the time twice, which makes it an effective cleanup option late game for nearly killing DDTs and 
nearly killing Moabs. And for the mid game, it's Sword Charge, kill 63, 76, 78. It's what the hero ability should do. As for before level 16, it hitting twice means that it almost kills Super Strams, which is nice. Chinook is a really niche support, only usable on a few maps, and even then, it's not that good in it, but it's still very usable as a support option, so it gets B. Glue Strike. I'm gonna be honest, it's so hard to try to find a use case for Glue Strike that isn't better than Snowstorm and Ebret or other support options, but if you do find it, such as Azili Double Dark Knights on X Factor Chims, that may be a reference to something. It's pretty nice. It essentially acts as a hero ability for a 63, 76, 78, although not fully reliable as proven by the fact that I kind of struggled against 78 with Glue Strike, which is funny. But overall, it only aggravating once means that it has the same issues as Snowstorm. Its main attack is nowhere near as good as Snowstorm as a SRAM cleanup option, but we're not factoring in that. It's also way too expensive as Glue Hose is like $3,500, the Strike ability is $3,700, Glue Splatter is like $2,000, it's early tier Glues are a goddamn mess with prices. It's just too expensive for it, what it does is essentially what I'm trying to say. Brambles is good early and 1,500 bad damage with a Berserker Brew on rank 100. Not much to say, it's just pretty good early game ability. Spike Storm. Oh how you've fallen. Now it gets outclassed by even the most basic of rank 100 damage like Sticky Bomb. And over 2 Spike Storm no longer gets the start of rank buff for the ability or any speed buffs at all, which means it's completely useless now. Which means we're ranking Spike Storm here, not because it's a round hundred damager, but because it's a pretty good mid-game carry with Moab Hex. Spike Storm ranked for mid-game. Amazing. But yeah, it's generally a pretty bad ability now that it's lost its only good niche. Glue Storm is Glue Strike, but it's even less efficient for its cost and it's way too slow, is how I should say it. It doesn't last the entirety of 95, which means if you need an MIB to hit lads, you can't fully skip it. And it procs way too slowly, which means that a BFP can pop into Moabs and the Moabs itself can actually pop through your defense before Glue Storm actually does something, which is really annoying. Especially when you're trying to clean up Super Strams and Glue Storm just does not activate until it leaks. It takes once every 2 seconds last time I checked, which is absolutely horrendous. 2 seconds is way too long. Now we're getting into the what abilities with Gwen's Cocktail, Leaping Sword, Firestorm, Maelstrom, Plasma Monkey Fan Club, Biohack, Homeland Defense, Call to Arms, Grand Saboteur, and Pirate Lord. Gwen's Cocktail is just brambles but worse early, but does better against 63, 76, 78, but not, not good. Leaping Sword helps against around 40, 63, 76, 78, why am I repeating myself? Yeah, it does do good against round 40, especially since it does 100 Moab damage, which pairs well with Downdraft. Or if you're, for some reason, not getting a Downdraft before round 40, you can use it to one-shot the Serams inside, which is pretty good. It also helps quite a bit for, like, round 36, round 15, 22, 23, but overall it's a really niche ability. And most of the time, you'd rather have Sada's main attack working instead of Sada leaping into another dimension to deal 200 damage to two Moabs. 
Now Gwen's Firestorm would actually do damage if we were on easier maps, but expert maps have nearly no track link and it's not even capable of killing around 63, 36, 78 on some expert maps, which yeah, that's really bad for a global screen nuke. This essentially acts as an on command heated up instead of an actual hero 10, which is really disappointing. The Maelstrom ability is too expensive for what it does. Again, 63, 76, 76, 78, but if you need something for those rounds, it's much better to get a 100 ice, 010 ice, 110 ice, or whatever you need. Especially since they somewhat do something after 18, unlike Maelstrom. The Super Monkey Fan Club is just a fringe mid game option since you need primary mentoring because the dart cross paths really matter, but you only get 10 darts, so primary mentoring is not that worth it. Oh, and it's also ability based for a mid game carry, which can perform well, but then again, for how expensive the setup is, it's not really that good of a mid game carry, especially since it pretty poorly translate into the post 80s. Biohack is just Patsuar, but much more complicated with targeting the closest monkeys and disables your attacks afterwards. C tier. Homeland defense is $70,000 for double attack speed, or you can get Sabo for $8,000 and have the boon speed. That's your choice. Homeland defense is just way too expensive for what it does. You need to save up $70,000 and then you need to have defense that actually benefits from Homeland which isn't even up 100% of the time. So you spend $70,000 on Homeland defense to double your DPS, but you have no DPS in the first place. Call to arms suggests Homeland, but that's expensive but also worse and less uptime. Grand Saboteur, oh boy. You're just spending $16,000 extra for a double drake and saboteur. The starting damage it deals is negligible and the buff it gives to Kenobis are also negligible. It's mostly used just so it can actually last throughout the entirety of 95 but that's about it, it's pretty useless. And we have the part lord ability. You're most likely gonna use Pirate Lord for the main attack, which means you have Brickle. Because it gives the Pirate Lord's grapes plus one pierce, and the grapes only have one pierce, so yeah, it's really good. And if you have Brickle, you have Mega Mines. You don't need a hook and ZM keys if you have Mega Mines, which sold them. It just doesn't do enough. Is what I'm trying to say. Maybe if it had five hooks and ZMGs used three hooks or something, or maybe if it had a way lower cooldown so it's really spammable. But as it stands, it's a very, very mediocre ability. Well, mediocre isn't the word anymore. It's bad now, it's in the territory of bad abilities. And Finalizing a part of this, we have Monkey Pirates, Transforming Tonic, Blast Chain, and Heartstopper. There are no real use cases for any of these abilities. You use them once in a blue moon and, well, Brickle and Azili are really good heroes, it's not because of these abilities. Monkey Pirates is what, too expensive for only hooking in one BFB every forever. Transforming Tonic is just Phoenix, but it does way less damage, has less pierce, has less range, has less uptime, does not have a good stepping stone. I'm pretty sure it's also more expensive, but I have to double check that. And also doesn't have camo. These two abilities are near useless. You'll never find a good use case for them. And to round things off in no particular order are the abilities not geared towards chimps or not realistically attainable in chimps. You could get an overclock and 
anti balloon on Kim's. I have done those two before, but it's really impractical and it's much easier to just rank them in non Kim's. Also, fun fact in version 1.0, this was not the Prince of Darkness, this was the Soul Bind, which lets you sacrifice one tower for one life. And it doesn't matter what the tower is, it could be a true sun god and you could sacrifice it for one life, so yeah, it wasn't a good ability. So there's that. Okay, I need to zoom out then. Yep, that's all in frame. So that's the full tier list. To recap, Mega Minds in SS alone has the best ability in TD6 Expert Chimps, followed by Sabo Hex Shells, Sonic Scream, and Phoenix in S, Barrage Star. Roar, Gizzy, Marine, First Strike Capability, Wizard Lord Phoenix, UCAF, Triple Charge, Rapid Shot, Perma Charge, Dark Shift, and S Minus, Naval Tactics, Annihilation, Artillery Command, Moab Eliminator, Pabana, Concussive Shell, Ball Flight, Blood Sacrifice, MAD Rocket Storm, Absolute Zero Bombardment, Super Maelstrom, Long Arm of Light, Cypher Funding at A, Storm of Arrows, Dark Champion, Dark Shift, Sonic Scream, Etienne's Drone Swarm, Wall of Trees, Snowstorm Overclock, Plasma Monkey Fan Club, Total Transformation, Moab Assassin, Rocket Storm at A minus, Pat's Hug, Sword Charge, Shinnok, Glue Strike, Bramble Spike Storm, Glue Storm at B, Gwen's Cocktail, Leaving Sword, Firestorm, Maelstrom, Super Monkey Fan Club, Biohack, Homeland Defense, Call to Arms, Grand Saboteur, and part of the Lord at C tier. And rounding things off is Monkey Pirates, Transforming, Tonic, Blasting, and Heartstropper on D tier. So, yeah, I hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you learned something new about the Blue Star Defense 6 meta. And see ya.